Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. And i uh, got a good one for you today. I'm at uh, Laguna Niguel, the park right by the ocean. If you can see that out there, that's Catalina Island out there. Clear day when it comes to the uh, beach. Uh, but there's a lot of crazy stuff to talk about right now. And uh, remember, whatever goes up in the stock market never has to come down. And it's going to go up forever. So... <laughs> Uh, before I get into it, please take a second to hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Share this with all your friends and colleagues. Please join our email list, which is in the video description below. And uh, again, let's get into it. Uh, Scott Rubner, who is the, they called him the guru of global markets over at Goldman Sachs, was talking about how we're going to have a year and melt up and that the stock market is going to continue to thrive and go up and we're going to see all time highs. Okay, um, you know, guys, uh, I, I get a kick out of stuff like this because I'm going to give you something co very contradictory to this in just a second. But think about what I'm about to tell you. The S&P 500, which is 500 stocks on an average, has seen 66 records in 2021 in trading, which is an average of a new record every 3.37 days. Okay, so it's just up, 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 up. Okay. Now, it's a beautiful day. People out hanging out, the park, kids playing football. You know, you got Thanksgiving break, people are off. Um, okay, people are having a good time. Do you think that things are just all hunky-dory and rosy and perfect? You know, I research over 50 newspapers and different news items and different things I'm subscribed to that I get all these different stories from. And again, things are very precarious right now. I do not believe for a second that they are not going to teeter and that there's going to be something that's going to push Humpty Dumpty off the wall and he's going to come crashing down and never be the same again. That's what I think is coming. Now, that being said, if you look at 1929 and you look at even 2008, everything on the news, everything was, it's great. La, 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 la. Keep going. Shh, don't worry. Keep going. Life's grand. Military helicopter ripping by. It's nice. So, that being said, guys, there's nothing to worry about, right? Well, no, okay? It, it, it's not, okay? Uh, JP Morgan just issued uh, a, a, they just issued something to talk about the S&P 500, and they think that the S&P 500 should fall to $2,500. That's the realistic value. So, when you hear that, and you think, wow, something could go 2,000 points down and go down basically about 45% off of where it's at right now, you should take a look at that. Again, get yourself financially ready right now. Do not spend excessively right now. You know, there's a lot of great articles about how to save money and different things I've got here that, uh, you know, we'll, I'll recommend for you. But please, the best advice that I took from somebody was to become debt free, okay? Got rid of the credit cards, got rid of excess bills, just got rid of everything I didn't need, sold stuff I didn't need, cleared out the garage. And you know what? I sleep better at night. I don't have to worry about it. When pandemonium rains and it's going to rain on all of us, when that happens, I'm ready for it. Now, maybe a month from now, maybe two days from now, maybe a year from now, but whenever that is, I'm gonna be ready for it. And I just think that these people that are talking about don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, it, it's, it's really bad advice. The other thing is that things that are above my pay grade, when you see different two-year bonds and different five-year notes that are hitting different uh, threat levels, that's a serious concern in the marketplace right now. And you have to look at all this stuff. But what it points to is that things are precarious right now. Not everything is hunky-dory and rosy. And again, the S&P could fall like that. And do we know the date? No. Do any of these people want to tell you what the date is? No. But then you get guys like Jim Cramer. And again, that investment club, I'm telling you, it's comedic gold getting stuff out of this guy because it's, hey, you should buy this this week. Here's what Cramer's buying this week. Okay, well, no. Okay? It's, it's absolutely nuts. That's how big this park is, guys. Isn't that cool? Kids out playing basketball. You've got the, the football game up on the hill. You've got the Ritz-Carlton up there. 
And again, everybody's like, oh, you can't go out there. Yeah, you can. It has nothing to do with the hotel. So, a friend of mine, just a little side note, uh, the Ritz-Carlton has this thing called an anniversary club. Uh, you sign up for it for free. You get free valet parking, which is $35 to park your car at that freaking hotel up behind me. Okay? 35 bucks to park your car there. Uh, it's free. Uh, get you 15% off the restaurant. Get you certain 15% uh, off from the stores. And you can save money buying stuff there. So definitely worth joining stuff like that. Isn't it crazy? Look at this haze that's out here as well. I'm going to show you something out here. It's a funky brown haze in the horizon. That's Catalina Island out there. It's 26 miles away. The Wrigley family that owned uh, the Cubs and also the Wrigley Chewing Gum at one point used to own that island out there. And they're the ones that started and developed most of it. There's a financial analyst who was basically the guru of the late 90s, Henry Blodgett, who was hired by everybody to talk about stocks and where they were going to go. He was basically the guru's guru when it came to stock anal analysis. Uh, he's talking about three things you should look out for right now because there's major problems uh, ahead with the stock market. And this guy said these are three things that you should look at and that, number one, none of your stock analysts know anything. They have no idea where this is going to go. They have no idea when the music is going to stop and when this thing is going to come crashing down and people are going to lose everything. Uh, he said it's number two. It's very typical and very difficult uh, for people to want to call the top, but they cannot call the top because they don't know where things are going. So that being said, he said that's you know a huge, huge problem with this. There's a ton of people out here on the beach today. It's really just a nice, nice day. Uh, number three, he said, for most people, it's worse to lose money than it is to miss the rocket ship going up. So for these people that want to buy and want to see things accelerate, that's worse for people than losing the money, which makes people irrational in their thinking. It's a great article, but this is a guy who saw the dot-com bubble and saw everything absolutely take off and skyrocket and go to the moon. And again, I know people that bought Yahoo stock. What's Yahoo, guys? Okay, Yahoo stock that literally every week their stock would double in value and that people basically retired uh, from buying that. I know a guy that uh, wrote me that traveled around the world on his Yahoo stock because he had made so much money from it in just over a year. Okay, AOL, ever heard of that? Okay, a lot of people made money on that. I made money on AOL, okay? Crazy, crazy stuff that is just not there anymore. So beware, guys, because nobody knows when the top is. But again, the gurus are going to continue to tell you to buy. But then there's all these people, the Bill Ackmans, the Ray Dalios, the Peter Schiff, all these people that want to be the person that says, it's over, Johnny, and that the stock market's going to collapse. Now, the next thing is all the Elon Musk fanboys out there, uh, I get a kick out of you guys because you know, I know you love the car, you love this guy. This guy could do nothing wrong. I'm telling you, this guy could open up a business painting, you know, uh, ceramics, and you guys would sign up for it. So it doesn't matter what this guy does, you're going to buy it. His mother came out uh, <laughs> this week with an article, which I got a kick out of this because this is just, I, I cannot imagine a mother not doing this. So the mom was upset at the president because she had said that uh, he went to the GM plant, the president did and was talking about how GM's leading the way. And, you know, there was a, a movie made about how GM killed the electric car and all this stuff. And her name is May Musk, that's Elon's mom. May said that Joe Biden must have pulled out the script from uh, uh, 20 years ago because she has no idea what Elon Musk or what uh, GM has done to destroy the electric car market. And uh, it's a travesty and blah, blah, blah. So that's funny. now. The other thing is there was another lockout in the Tesla shares or Tesla uh, cars this weekend. They got a code 500, okay, and they couldn't get inside the car. And this is all over Twitter. It's all over everything. I've got a great article on this. People that are parked in the snow and can't get in their cars. Now, I get people that write me and go, you're stupid. We got a key fob when we have our car. We can use it every time. Well, 
these people couldn't get in the car. There was an override to the car and they could not get access to the car, could not start the car, could not drive the car, could not get inside. So the best one was the snow picture. People that sat there in the snow and uh, uh, didn't have access to the inside of their car. So that did happen. It happened another 500 times over the weekend, guys. So not with every car, but again, this is the problem with this. And again, the Elon fanboys are like, I don't want to hear about it, okay? You're gonna hear about it, okay? What's he sold? $9 billion for the stock now? Why? Why is he sold so much? His tax liability and everything wasn't that much. I think he, he understands that the stock is not worth $1,100. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Share your thoughts on Henry Blodgett. Let me know what you think about this because it's fascinating to say the least where this guy is looking at uh, the market from a realistic standpoint and that we just don't know, guys. We just don't know where this is headed. And I know it's it's gonna collapse, okay? But again, you know, Morgan Stanley, keep buying, buy, 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 buy. It's gonna melt up between now and the end of the year, okay? It, it cannot do this forever, guys. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Right now, everybody is competing for your online dollar. They want you to spend everything with their business and not go anyplace else. Now, Walmart is doing something between the end of November and December that's kind of unique. And what they're doing is they're having these online shopping events where they're going to have 30 of them between now and the end of December, which is a lot, guys. That's a few each week that they're gonna have. And one of them is a concert with uh, a singer named Jason Derulo. Whether you like the guy or not, I could care less. Uh, but these are interactive shopping uh, experiences where, think about this, Jason Derulo sings, sits there. If he's wearing a jacket and you can buy that jacket for $68, does that interest you? Does that make it so, oh wow, I've gotta buy the jacket Jason's wearing right now. That's what they're pushing right now. That's what they're leaning towards right now. And this is a great tool. There's other companies that I've seen that have come to my events that have pitched interactive uh, video where you can see what's on the screen, click on it and buy what they're wearing. Now, imagine if you could do this with TV shows. This is the future. You're watching your favorite episode of whatever and uh, you you know click on the dress and say, oh wow, I love that dress. How much is it? You're going to get to that point that you're going to be able to eventually purchase things like this. And there are companies that are working on this technology right now because I've seen it. The problem with it, it doesn't work on everything. Uh, it doesn't work on existing movies. You've got to have things built into it so that people understand what the marketplace is. But that's definitely the future of what could happen with shopping. Does that interest you? Does that make a difference with you? If, if a singer wears something, if an actor, you know, if James Bond wears a jacket, is that something, oh, I have to have that. Does that interest you? Let me know. I really want to know what you guys think about all this. This is kind of out in the point by uh, the Ritz-Carlton. And you've got all the different uh, rocks out here you can climb on. Just really beautiful out here. Now, here's a great article talking about how Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation. But the only thing that, you can read it, the only thing that I don't understand is how can you have something and call something a hedge against inflation when it was developed in January of 2009? That's when Bitcoin was started, was January 2009. But the problem with it is it's not seen an in inflationary cycle, guys. Yes, it's a hedge against fiat currency and, and regular money printing and governments that print money wildly and uh, with reckless disregard for their economies. Yes, totally agree with you. But for you to sit there and say it's a complete hedge against inflation, that's crazy. Now, the other thing is El Salvador is going all in on Bitcoin. They're having a Bitcoin city that they're building and, uh, you know, they're going to go all in with their citizenry, get people to pay with Bitcoin, get paid with Bitcoin, and they're going to do that. Now, federal government just seized $56 million worth of Bitcoin from a company called uh, BitConnect and they're going to auction that off uh, because this BitConnect company was uh, working on Bitcoin lending and fleeced a bunch of investors, and they're going to, uh, uh, they're going to basically uh, pay uh, 
they're going to auction it off and basically make good on some of the investors that lost money and uh, pay restitution with that. Hillary Clinton came out and said that Bitcoin's terrible. It's going to destabilize economies. Okay, who? Okay, so Hillary Clinton came out and gave her two cents in all this uh, this week. So this is a beautiful place, guys. This is just really nice. You know, just a nice, warm November day. You know, cannot cannot beat stuff like this, guys. Our gross domestic product is shrinking. Our economy is shrinking. It is contracting. Uh, we are losing more jobs each week by people filing unemployment and businesses going under. Uh, we are seeing more evictions. We are seeing more foreclosures happen right now. And we are seeing the stock market at an all-time high. We're seeing the fact that uh, I was wrong. I thought that Jerome Powell would never get a second term and the president just named him and nominated him for a second term because he's doing such a great job. Now, again, a Fed is supposed to keep interest rates down, keep people employed, and build a good economy. And I don't think that this guy's doing that. This guy's in it for himself and his rich friends, and that's it. We are seeing the economy contract at levels that we've never seen before, guys. Uh, we're seeing inflation at almost a 40-year high now, guys. The numbers are gonna come out this week and you're gonna see inflation at a 40-year high. Uh, people reached out to me from different counties. Uh, Walmart uh, in Riverside County, completely out of turkeys. A lot of places don't even have any turkeys left over. Now, it's early, it's the week of Thanksgiving. So, you know, who knows what they're gonna have, but you're seeing shortages of everything else that goes along with this and people are paying top dollar for this. I get a kick out of the people that send me that look down 89 cents a pound for the butter ball and different things, but look at the side dishes. Look at everything you're, you're paying. Uh, I had uh, a friend of mine call me. <laughs> I wish I could play this message because she was just freaking out at uh, how much she paid for all the sides and the stuffing and the gravy and everything else. It was at an all-time high. So that's what we're seeing for Thanksgiving right now, guys. But things are great. Things are great with your family and, uh, you know, nothing to worry about, guys. So um, I, I still cannot believe Jerome Powell got nominated for a second term. Uh, you know, Greg Manorino said the greatest line. He was hired to finish the job he was started, which was ruin everything. Maybe that's the case. But uh, it's going to be interesting, to say the least, how this all plays out. And uh, again, share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. I have people that write me and put comments in the video description that everything is great in the economy. Now, there are businesses out there that are thriving right now, and you can own a thriving business right now. You know, look at things like the uh, gas stoves and things that people are buying as alternatives. Those people are doing well. The people that do prepping stuff, oh my gosh, they have lines out the door, okay, to sell prepping goods. Um, the, the food that stays for years, cannot keep it on the shelves, guys. So. Look at what you can do differently in your business and start a, you know, a side hustle and do that. Sell everything that you don't need right now to get rid of your bills right now, guys. That's what I would do, okay? So share your thoughts on all this stuff. This side of the beach, that's the Ritz-Carlton above me and that's the area that you see when you stand up there at the Ritz-Carlton and look down. Just a beautiful spot, no two ways about it couple great stories. Uh, one more Bitcoin story, and that is Odell Beckham Jr., who just uh, joined the Rams NFL football team. For you Bitcoin fanatics, he's getting paid his entire salary, he's decided, in Bitcoin uh, with the Rams, which is about $4.25 million this guy's going to take in strictly Bitcoin, which is leaving people with all these questions. Is he going to use the cash app? How is he going to store it? Who's going to hold it? You know, and again, I'm sure that this will come out if he's bragging about how he's getting paid. I'm sure he's going to explain how he's doing that. And the next thing is that with the shipping crisis right now, and again, I'm really south right now. Uh, yesterday, I was really north. Uh, you don't see the container ships here that you normally see. So they're just not out there right now. 
Uh, a lot of them are also staying uh, 150 miles out right now, but many companies, especially toy companies, have decided that they're not going to uh, have product for the holiday season. They've completely given up on Christmas. So that's horrible. I mean, how do you survive that? You have product that you're gonna have delivered and you just give up on it. So, you know, share your thoughts on this. This is electronic, it's kids' toys. It's absolutely everything. But there's a great article out of the uh, uh, Independent that you guys can read about this stuff. It shows, you know, just how bad things have gotten. These people have been waiting for product for months. Think about this. Some of these people were supposed to get their Christmas deliveries 90 days ago, and they still don't have them. So, you know, you can say, oh, it's poor planning, whatever it is. What it is is that this, this nightmare with the shipping containers is taking its toll. You're going to see massive bankruptcies as a result of this. They're still blaming the truck drivers because they're not paid enough and they don't want to work and everything like that. But just read the article because it's definitely worth reading and, uh, you know, hearing what they have to say about all this. Because, you know, I, I just think it's, it's going to destroy a lot of businesses. Plus, the other thing is the uh, perishable goods that are on those, uh, uh, those boats, you know, from coffee to food to everything. It's just sitting there getting older by the day. I'm going to end this video on these last two stories. And we talk a lot about making money and opportunities. And uh, these two stories that I have for you are absolutely amazing. There is a concierge service. You know, you go to the hotel, stay there, and they have a concierge desk. It's there to help you, give you services. What restaurant's good? I want Thai food. Recommend a Thai restaurant. There is an, a concierge service called Knightsbridge. Knightsbridge has 50 clients only. That's it. They charge $40,000 a year and they will do everything for you from go to the hotel, the nice hotel like the Ritz Carlton next door to where I'm sitting, and they'll wait in line for you. They'll wait in line at the restaurant. They'll wait in line to get your, uh, uh, your, you know, your uh, lounge chair at the pool. They'll do basically everything for you. You want to go to a concert? You don't want to wait in line? They'll do it for you. They'll pretty much do every type of service and it starts at 40 grand. You want to meet a celebrity? They'll do a private meet and greet with a celebrity. Pretty cool stuff. But again, my point of this is that Peter Anderson that runs his company in these tough economic times, they're talking about the rich have money to spare and they're spending all this money right now. And that's what you need to do is look at opportunities where people have money and you can make some additional money. The next one is a site this is real, okay? The news story is below. A guy set up a site called rentahitman.com and uh, he, had re he had fake reviews on it where it would be like, you know, Laura S. said that uh, they were discreet with handling the taking out of my husband. Absolutely crazy. A guy named Bob en uh, Ennis, not uh, Mr. Uh, Guido Finelli, who they said runs the site, uh, some mafiosa guy. Uh, Bob Ennis, who started this this site, um, charges people, uh, you know, a fee to join, and he shares the really negative stories with law enforcement. A woman this week, you know, contacted the site, wanted to uh, have her husband taken out, and uh, he turned her into the police, and now she's, you know, under arrest. So again, you can make money doing anything, guys. And rentahitman.com. You know, absolutely crazy that there's things like this out there, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Uh, please do not forget to hit the like button. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, share this with uh, all your friends and colleagues. And uh, what else? Oh, don't forget, if you want to sign up for the Weeble promotion, it is the easiest place on the planet Earth to trade cryptos. If you want to dabble in that, you want to dabble in Shiba Inu, here's the crazy thing that I was going to share this story the other day. If you bought $50 with a Shiba Inu and it goes to a dollar, you would have a million dollars because for $50, you could buy uh, a million Shiba Inu coins, 50 bucks. So you can use the link below, get a free account. They'll give you a free share. If you put a dollar in the account or a penny or anything, they will give you another free share. Onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon.